Yeah. It's just a makeup.
Uh-oh. Hello. 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 Hi, guys. Y'all okay? Yeah. Just me and you then. <laughs> Are we all okay? Yeah. That's a bit better. A bit better. So, let me introduce ourselves. My name's Jay Arnie, and this is the fabulous Mama Mama Mitchell <laughs> on Instagram. And today we are representing Crown Brush. So, we're here demonstrating, well, Mitchell is demonstrating, and I will be his glamorous assistant, um, demonstrating Crown Brush products, tools, and techniques for you guys here on the, live, uh, on, on the stage live. If you have any questions, please just ask away, put your hands up. I'm here to help you guys as well as Mitchell. So we'll just be talking through what we're doing and how we're doing it. Yeah. So basically what I'm going to show you how to do is to create quite a classic sort of wing liner. But then after that I'm going to like step it up a notch and show you how to do like a glitter liner. So sort of two in one. So yeah, let's get started. So. When I'm doing these kind of tones, like quite bronzy tones, rather than using like an eyeshadow primer, I prefer to, to just use a concealer. Just because I feel like these kind of tones blend in better with a, a flesh tone concealer. So I'm going to take the Barry M concealer, my favourite ever. It's so good guys, you just need to get it. It's quite a new concealer, it's called All Night Long. And I'm just going to place this all over the eye. Don't be shy, be quite generous with your product. I am living for the wing on the other side, by the way. We're getting there, we're getting there. Unreal. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have you all done some damage today? Yeah. Who's been spending money? Hands up. <laughs> oh, just a few of you. I know. Yeah, so I'll be yeah. very shy. Everyone's what? very quiet. When we're at the stalls, no one's this shy. <laughs> one one brush and really just start to buff this into the eye and this is such a versatile brush you can use this for your concealer sometimes you even use it for a bit of nose contour obviously you can use it for eyeshadow it's such a nice brush I love this brush it's actually so my favorite brush so I just hold it up it literally is hold it against my hand but it's um, it's so so fluffy but dense and elongated we were talking about this on creams, but you can also blend away powders. Yes, so it's, it, I literally have about 20 of these yeah. in our brush fields. It's, it's quite yeah. flat. So you've got the choice whether you want it to be a fluffy Actually, blending brush or you can angle it a bit more. I put it and over use it like a flat brush. Your model's eye. Yeah. You can see it there. In it's the big quite screen. rectangular, it's such an nice shape. It's amazing. It's and it's so good. And I think it's really reasonable, only six euros as well. Fabulous. Like, seriously. <laughs> we all need a bit of that in our lives. <laughs> Such a nice brush. So what are you doing with that cream, Mitchell? So just... I'm really just evenly spreading it out, just buffing it across the lid yep. and all the way up into the brow. Lovely. Really just nice and soft. And then to really smooth it out, that's when I'm going to use a brush a little bit more flat and just start really tacking it on. Just using nice bouncing motions with my brush. A bit of bounce on the C511. I love a good bounce. <laughs> a, bit, a bit of bounce. <laughs> but when I'm bouncing, I'm not pressing in. I'm just bouncing that, that brush. So it's not like it, a light pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. You know, because I always find sometimes if you press in too much, you end up creating marks in your base. So you want to be quite just loose with your wrist, like flicking, like flicking the wrist. Look at the wrist. Look at the wrist. Actually, that's like a, who needs salt bay when you can have brush bay? Exactly. <laughs> that is such a good thing. Literally, look at the wrist. Literally. Look at the wrist. Is that a salt? I'm done with a brush. That's such a good idea. I'm to do that. Yeah, brush bay. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to have a C511 in your hand. Oh, yeah, you definitely brush do. Brush bay. It's not possible without it. So, come on. I'm going to give you that, my love. Guys, can I just talk about this palette while Mitchell's using it? Like, literally, let's hold it up over your face. It's the. C5 35 SN That's it, not C5 35 SN Yeah, it's, it's been a long day It's been a long day If you can just see there It's copper And all sorts of tones in between Unbelievable Like I don't know who doesn't suit these, these No ones. Everyone, everyone like, So versatile And this palette's new to Crown Literally, they've got three exclusive palettes that they've brought to the show, and it's literally 20 euros. Yeah, and the, the, How many the matte shades are so, even though they're so pigmented, they're so smooth, so they just it blend so easily. It's almost like effortless, which so, I, like. I love that. I think it's so much nicer when you, your shadows don't give you like a challenge. 
Oh my god. So I've just tried to add up how many shadows are in the palette. You can tell I've been a makeup artist for far too long because I can't add up, basically. Oh <laughs> I was like, five times seven, quick. <laughs> yeah, 35, 35 eyeshadows. That's because you're younger and quicker. Oh, wow. Quicker. <laughs> 35 eyeshadows in this palette. I'm just going to hold it up. 35 the so 20 good. euros I think is such good value for money it's unbelievable and Mitchell's just using this sort of orangey tone yeah it's almost like it's, it's a little bit orange but it's quite like, um, like a medium tone brown so yeah. it's not too orange which is the kind of colours I want to go for with this look I don't want it to be too much colour you know what I mean but it's still a ni nice amount of warm the palette's so nice because there's a real mixture of shimmers yeah, and mattes in there and the mattes are really blendable but buildable and yeah, the shimmers are really really pigmented. Fiber over shimmer. Notice, on my face, to be fair, I don't even know if you'll be able to see properly on that but if you actually came in, I had a look really close to my face. My face hasn't creased at all. At all. So and it's, it's not been set or anything, it's, it's just been, she's been opening her eyes. So this really does help with the patty motions of your, um, of your um, C511 brush. Definitely. It's always important how you apply that base, yes, which is really why is. I prefer That's using a C511. So now I'm going to take a C330 brush, and I've literally only found it about, out about this brush like about 10 minutes ago, and I'm upstairs. I mean, what took you so long? It's so really? nice. <laughs> and I'm going to start in the very center of the crease, and really lightly just start to tickle that into the crease. I'm not being too worried about my blend just yet. I'm more building my color and building my shape to start with. I literally love this crease colour. It's so nice. I only discovered it when you just used it earlier, when you did the other eye in front of me, and it's such a beautiful colour in this palette. And it's so matte as well. Yeah, it really and creamy. is. Creamy. Sometimes I find I struggle to find matte eyeshadows, especially in a palette. I feel like I've always got to get single matte eyeshadows. But this is one of the palettes where I feel like I don't, which is why we reach for this one today. Yeah, we were talking about this earlier, saying I think this is the most versatile yeah, yeah, yeah. palette for everything. And you can look at it and get inspired because there's really bright, yeah. poppy colours. But then there's also more so, There's just so much you can do with it. And it's Definitely. almost like, yeah, I love how it's thought out in the actual palette. Like, this, this, it, you can sort of just put a shadow that's next to it yeah. with each other and it just creates a really nice Yeah, you look. don't really have to think about it, do you? you? No, you're so, so right. Because who loves thinking? Like, <laughs> how tiring is that? You see brains <laughs> Putting this all the way through my crease, again being really really light with my pressure. I think that's the biggest key in any of my makeups, my pressure, I'm almost just tickling. You, you almost want to feel like you're not doing anything. If the moment you feel like you're doing something, you're doing too much, I promise you. I always live by that and it, 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 it gets me, gets me good makeup look, so. Okay. You didn't go too far wrong by doing that, did you? No, it, 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 I promise you, it will save your life. Because I used to be so heavy-handed. I used I, to be as well. It's really so hard to not be heavy-handed. And it's hard to get out of that look. I used to always set my eyeshadow base as well with translucent powder. Okay. And um, I always found, when I'd set my base... Ooh. Ooh. Let's get that out the way. Um, when I used to set my base with the translucent powder, I could be a lot more heavy-handed. Because it was stuck on the eye. It wouldn't move about when I went over it. Whereas when you've not set your base with a powder and then you're going to go over with a really heavy hand, it's just going to move your base about. So to keep that base really nice and intact, we just need to make sure we're literally just feathering our brush over the eye. And I think the brushes make such a yeah, big really difference good. as well. They make a huge difference. The softer the brush, the better, really. And the fluffier. And these are so nice. Yeah. The ground are so soft and densely packed. Anyone got any questions? Anything at all? Um, a C330. That's it. C330. I was like, oh. It's like the white fluffy, but slightly longer and fluffier. It's funny because when Mitchell picked this up earlier and said he'd never seen it, I use this for concealer because it's so fluffy, yeah, so it's yeah. really nice to actually see someone using it on the eyes. Well, this actually really reminds me of a MAC 224, yeah, but very, a lot very smaller, so which I prefer. I prefer smaller brushes, and it's not molting as much as a 224, so that's yeah. always good. If I was and going to buy a brush and then all your hairs fall out, just to never get that. And it's also a quarter of the price. Well, exactly. Well, probably less than a quarter as well. So much cheaper. Love. So, now I'm going to take a nice mustardy shade. On another C511 brush. So this is the first time I used this was when I used it on my base. 
So now I'm going to use it to almost blend out this mid mid tone brown. And I'm just going to take this nice mustardy shade in the corner and really just lightly flick it around the edges. I'm not really doing circular motions, but also just sideways. And I really love the look of an eyeshadow when it's really pulled up into the front of the brow. So I'm never shy to pull it all the way up there. I feel like it really like feminizes the face. And even though you make it something a bit more dramatic, it's really just getting rid of structure, which I really like. I think it makes it very like sultry and sexy. And I always find that whenever I do this on my a client, the boyfriends will always like be obsessed with the way they look. Just because they're like, they're like confused, they don't see any lines, they're just like... So are you saying if I buy a C511 and this palette, yeah. if I brush it into my brows, like so, you will get with a tickling motion, I'll get a boyfriend. Well, girls, go and try it and let yeah. us know how you get on. <laughs> Instagram message us, tweet us, let us know. <laughs> I might have to try that. Same, to be fair. <laughs> Why don't you do mine and I'll do yours and then we'll try. <laughs> Wonder how that would end up tonight. <laughs> So just, just always going back and forth with my brush, just into the um, old shades. I love the pigment. So nice. The pigment on these shadows is amazing. Did anybody else have any questions? I know you guys said yes. Who are both of our favourite makeup artists? Mitchell, you go first. Oh, um, Stacey, Marie, and you. Aww. She's just the best ever. Um, what about you? So, before I met him, it was actually Mitchell. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> yeah. my God, I'll cry. Girl crush, no, I'm joking. Oh um, God, it I'm was him. actually Mitchell because I just think he's amazing. And even though my style of makeup is really different, I can appreciate the artistry. But I also absolutely love Mario Dedevonovic. Oh, I was so jealous he went to mask us, but so. I think he's incredible with what he does and the way he is. But, yeah, love. What about you? Who's yours? Mitchell! Right, so I'm going to go in with the Crown Bush Highlighter Palette next, and I'll be using this as a highlighter later on, but I'm going to use it on the eyes to start with, and I'm going to start off with this shade. This is the Bronze and Glow Palette, guys. It's unbelievable. This is unreal on the skin, but it's even nicer on the eyes. It's like so nice. It's like, it's so like fluffy, so it really just goes on the eyes effortlessly. For everybody that can't see. Yeah, just taking this shade. And I'm taking that on a C510 brush. Just a really nice on. flat shade, a brush by a crown. <laughs> that is so pretty. It's so nice. I'll swatch that on my hand actually. If you need and guys, well, at the end, because like I say, I don't know if you can see it as much on this, but at the end, come and have a look and you'll see how intense these um, pigments are. That, that is the colour of my hand, which I'll show you guys in a moment, like so on nice. the top. It's so sparkly and pretty. For anyone that can see down there, over there, it's so pretty. This is from the Bronze and Go palette that Mitchell's using, and it's like a be beautiful gold. It's literally so pretty on the face and the eyes. So these palettes are so versatile, because even though it's a face palette, you can still use it on the eyes. And again, the C510 is my eyes. favourite brush. Oh my god, yeah. Literally. It's such a good brush. I feel like you can do so much with it as well. Like with this brush, you can smoke out your lower lash line, you can smoke out the top lash line, yeah. you can pack a matte glue onto the lid, you can pack a shimmer onto the lid. So it's like endless, really. You can even contour your nose if you want to apply a dramatic nose contour, <laughs> which I'm all about. There's so much you can do with it. Anyone else have any questions? Anyone? No? You're very shy. Very shy, no, which is nice. Shy, Very good. polite bunch. <laughs> right, so I'm going to take the light now. <laughs> Right, so, now I'm just going to take literally just a little bit of like a cream sort of liquid. It's, I, I, can't, I don't really know how to explain the texture of it, but it, it's just quite runny, but it does dry matte. And I'm going to take it, this is probably my favourite brush by Crown, because you can do it again, you can do so much with it. I love a really detailing brush. Um, this is the C514 brush. 
Um, and I'm going to take... Oh, That's it, the brush. Taking this one. Can you see how skinny it is? This right here. And you could even use this as like your liner if you wanted to, but I'm going to take this all over the lid just to make it really, really twinkly. So while we're talking about eye brushes, I just wanted to, I was telling all the girls on the, the, the Crown Brush stand about this, but we've actually got an offer on, which is a show special, over at the Crown stand, with basically all the eye brushes that we're using. So we've got this liner brush, the eyeshadow, the C510 and the C511, all in a bag. We've done that unconsciously, I'm yeah. not doing it just because. He's not just doing it because he's used it, but just conveniently, all of these brushes are in one set. Yeah. Like you know when you really get a brush set and then you've got like two brushes that you use and then yeah. the rest you like never use. That's not the brush set. That's no, like I know. Well, this is, uh, this is the first time I've seen this because it's a show special. And literally, I was like, oh, I use that. I use that. I use basically all of all of these brushes. There's two liner brushes, the skinny one that you've got in there. And when you had to add it up, you end up in the end of the game. Yeah, we, we worked it out brushes. earlier that basically if you bought just the C5, the, the two basic brushes that Mitchell's just used, and Are then the liner brush, that would come to the price of this it. whole kit. All the twinkle. Are we seeing the twinkle? Yeah, but, oh, sorry, I'm detracting away like from the sparkle. <laughs> sorry. Like I say, when you have, come and have a look at it at the end, and you'll, you'll really see the twinkle. But this is this is a really nice brush as well because it's even it's obviously not a blending brush, but it really blends a liquid really nicely. It doesn't give it like a harsh edge. And I always find sometimes you get um, liner brushes that are quite um, stiff, and that's what gives you a really stiff edge. Whereas this is so bendy, it's so flexible, so you can really like maneuver a liquid really easily. So if you find you struggle blending like liners into like your shadows and stuff like that, I love this one for this because it's so just delicate. It's so good for like gel liners yeah, as well and so like good. liquid liners because it's so thin and, and easily movable and it's quite long. So, like, like I say, we're going to go extra in a second, but I'm just going to add the liner. So I'm going to go in with a nice liquid liner, just a black liquid liner, whatever your favourite liquid liner is, I don't mind. Sorry guys, just getting the brush right. Get this one. So, I'm going to take another of them brushes, and again, I'm just showing you how versatile this brush is. You can do something all over the lid with it, or you can do an actual wing liner with it, obviously, which I think is what everyone would think of doing with this. It's going to take a liquid liner. I always have to take my liquid liner on the back of a palette anyway, just because I feel like it, it's a, a, one, it's a bit more hygienic, and two, you, I feel like you have a lot more playtime with the actual liner, so you don't go through as much liner as well. So, when I do my liner, I like to think of, think of it in three sections. My first section will just be the liner across my lash line, yeah? So that's all I want you to think about for now, just, just that bit. Don't think about anything else, don't start panicking, just that bit. Because I know liner can be very stressful, and it stresses me out, probably sure. But just as, as long as you break it down, it makes it so much easier. I always literally start getting hot sweats and anxiety when it comes to doing liner, but I actually think the way you've just broken it down makes it so much easier. And it, it, it just makes you not really panic think about, about it. Much. Yeah, you're so right. I'm and not actually, really a panicker, so I just, think, nah. I just there's no need in panicking. If you, <laughs> if you mess up, that's what concealers for, like, really. Let's that, be really honest, guys. So I'm going to start right at the end of my lash line, and I'm almost just pulling it inwards. The reason I'm starting at the end of my lash line is because that's where I want it to be almost the thickest. So the first place where I actually apply my product will be where I have the most product. So that's why I do like to start on this outer corner of the lash line. But I'm going to stop when I reach the end of my lash line. And you really want to create a really nice gradual sort of lift towards the end of the lash line. So what the effect that I'm going to be creating is a little bit of height here, and then it's really going to thin out towards the inner corner. So you've got that really nice, sort of like a diagonal. And you could make this as dramatic as you wanted to. If you were going for a really dramatic look, you could really diagonal it off, which I love that kind of look. But with these kind of shadows, I'm going to leave it a bit more, just not as like 90 degrees, a bit more like 45 degrees. <laughs> And another thing that I love about this brush is it harbors so much product, so you don't have to find yourself going in for loads more, like, really often. 
it's just such an easy brush to use. I think people always get a bit scared with a pointy brush because it's like using a brush. You know what I mean? Like actually it's using a brush. Pain and it's yeah. Totally but some people kind of prefer something a bit stiffer. But it it looks scary. But once you actually use the C five one four, it's so easy to kind of paint liner on and off. And because it is so thin as well, if you make a mistake, that mistake is going to be so tiny. Yeah. So it's so easy to sort of like just make it a little bit thicker and then make it thick on the other side and sort of no one will ever know. Because I've probably made about three mistakes so far, but you guys won't know because I'm not panicking. So, promise is just don't panic and your client will never panic as well. That's the best thing. And I actually prefer using this brush with a liquid instead of taking it straight out of the pot or because I feel so like you have so control. much more control this way as well. Like I can really get right at the applicator, like right at the actual brush. Whereas when I'm using like say my liquid like this. If I, if I wanted to get really close to the applicator, I'd, I'd have to put my hands on the liquid liner and I'd have black all over me and it's just not what I'm about today. So I, I would have to be really far back. So just to, it allows you to have that control. So when I hold this one, I'm holding it here. But when I hold this one, I'm literally right at the brush. It's so, almost like a pen. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, it is literally like a, it's like a biro pen. So simple. So simple, but so effective, guys. And that's the way I like it. Such talent. I'd watch this for hours. Don't put that pressure on me. <laughs> well, don't look, don't look, no one look. Turn away. Go ahead. Go. I think it's always really important as well that you do get your clients to open and close because a black liner is, is a really harsh thing to do on someone's eye. So you really need to know what it looks like with their eyes open. Like sometimes I find people do the liners with their eyes closed and then they open and it's like, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so really just allow her to open and close her eyes and just really take your time with it so she can do that. And I promise the end result, even though it might take a little bit longer, it will be so much more worth it. I used to hate doing liquid liner. I used to hate it more than anything. I used to be a proper like gel guy, but now I'm just a liquid kind of lady. <laughs> yeah, I've not used that one anyway, so it's fine. You just don't understand. I'm just going to pull it out a little bit further. So that's my first section of the liner done, yeah? So again, just don't think of anything else other than that first section. Now I'm forgetting about that section and moving on to my second section. And the second section is the liner from my lash line up towards the tail of my brow, yeah? So that's the second section, don't think about anything else, yeah? Just that line. I'm going to just get a little bit more liner. What is it? I'm just so prepared. Already on it, already on it. So what I'm going to do when I do this, I'm going to get her to open her eyes. Just because I find when you're doing a wink, you really need to see what it looks like with her eyes open. Because she's not going to be walking around with her eyes closed. This is not going to happen, is it? Well, I don't know actually, but you know. I mean, it, it looks so really fabulous. Like yeah. She's just going to walk around like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get her to just look straight ahead. And I'm just going to give myself a little starting point. <laughs> A little dark just at the end of the lower lash line so not the end of the top lash line at the end of the lower lash line and then I'm gonna pull this out just towards the tail of the brow that brush makes that look so easy so easy <laughs> like, trust me it is the easiest thing ever if you're gonna get one brush I'd get this guys get this and maybe a few others but maybe no 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 you need that in a C511 in your yeah, life yeah you, you definitely need a C511 C5 and a C514 100% but I do feel like if you, you find liner is something you struggle with, I promise you this is, it, it's so affordable, but it's an amazing investment. So just go back, guys. I don't need to stand when I was trying. So then what I'm going to do, that's my second section done. And now I'm going to go on to my third and final section. And basically what all this is, is just connecting the two together. So this should be like the easiest part really. You've got the two stressful parts over and done with. 
So this is where you can almost be like, <sighs> but not fully, because we're not done yet. So you can relax a little bit, but not fully, yeah? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get her to keep her head up, but look straight down towards her knees. And I'm going to pull in from about halfway on this liner, and pull it in towards that lash line. Just like that. And then get her to close, because she's got a really steady eye when she's got her eyes closed. So if I'm going to start detailing something, if she's got her eyes open and fluttering about, it's going to be really hard for me to do that. So having her eyes closed is just going to allow that balance and control. So I'm just going to start filling this in now. You make this look so easy. Because I do it about 12 times a day. Yeah. I do love doing liner. I used to hate it, but I think having tools that help you make you love it. Yeah, it makes such a big difference. And it's, I think. it changes that that sort of attitude when when you when your client says, "Oh, I want a wing liner," and you're like, oh, "No, thanks, I don't think I'm gonna no, do it." Thanks. You sure you don't want like a rounded eye? Do you know what I mean? It sort of takes that away from it because I know we've all been there. If you haven't, buy a liner. <laughs> buy a liner for straight ahead. Straight down. I'm just going to start to pull this a little bit further out. But notice I'm literally not going all the way out to the end of the eye straight away. I'm just edging my way out really slowly. Again, just for control and just so then you've got that sort of peace of mind that you've still got some place to go. Let's go ahead. Does anybody else have any questions? No? Concentration is so real. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm doing this on 20 minutes sleep. I don't know how my hands are either. <laughs> so then what I'm going to do, just because I want it to pull out a little bit more, so what I'm going to do, instead of pulling it back in, I'm going to come outwards now. And I'm just going to use the very tip of my brush. Rather than using my brush like long ways, I'm just going to go straight in like that. So it's just the tip touching the skin, yeah? So on the point of the brush, yeah. so to speak, yeah? The very, the very point of the brush. Right. And it's so easy to do this because the point is so, so fine. So it's just, again, it's just going to help you out so much having this brush. I also find clothes. that this brush doesn't tend to fray. You know, like some liner yeah, brushes yeah. tend to fray after a little while once you've cleaned them, etc. I find that these brushes, this particular brush, the bristles tend to stay in place yeah, really, really, really well. Yeah, really good. a really nice hold. Yeah, they're, but they're firm, but they say they don't tend to fray, which is my pet peeve with liner brushes. If you wanted to, you could leave it right there, but like I say, I'm not really one to do something in house. So I'm going to go all the way and do a nice little liner now. So I'm going to take that cream shadow what I just used before, that liquid shadow. Um, no, the um, little liner brush that I So I think when people, when you think of doing a glitter liner, it's quite, for me anyway, when I first started doing them, I was almost scared to go on the black. But if you go on the black, it's really not a problem. I'd rather you go onto the black and make a mistake than go onto the shadow and make a mistake. Because if you go onto the black, you can just go over with a bit more liquid liner, do you know what I mean? But if you go up onto your shadow, it's a bit like, can't no going back, like, just don't, just try and forget about it, you know? Try and move on from the situation. So I'm going to go back in with our... Uh, C514 brush, and I'm literally just going to pull this right over the top of that black liner. And what this brush does really well in doing as well is it doesn't mix you, um, your liners. I always find sometimes with two liquid liners, 
if you're putting them both together, they can almost bleed together, whereas this it keeps them really separate because it is so sturdy. <laughs> so thin as well. Because we are using such a small brush as well, it just makes it so concentrated and so like shiny. Are we seeing that shine? Mm -hmm. We're seeing that. It's so pretty, isn't it? Any questions? Anything? Makeup? Blind? Personal? Anything? No? Liner, it's the Inglot 27. I've just said, I wouldn't use it out of the tube just because, you, again, you don't have that control. I'd use like a little brush to really apply it because you, you can get right at the end of the brush then. I always end up messing up if I use it out of the tube. Always. And again, you're almost just following that black line, so you want it to be a little bit thicker towards your outer corner, and then thinner as you get towards the inner corner of the eye. And then I have almost gone down onto my black a little bit, so I'll just show you how to fix that. So I'm going to go back to my black liquid liner brush. So many bushes. Does anyone else get to this point in the day where you look at your table and it's just like, where the hell is anything? And then your client goes and there and you're like, oh, right. So going back to our black liquid. And this is where you can, it's, this is almost like the concealer to clean it up. That's the way you want to think of it. So any little, any little droppage that you got, you can almost just carve it back out with this. And I always find, even if you didn't get any sort of like drop down, I would do this anyway because it just really separates the two and keeps them really sharp. And it keeps that contrast there as well. I think what we'll do now is I'm going to finish the eye, I'm going to get a lash on and then do a bottom lower, lower lash line and then I think we'll finish the demo up here but then if you want to come over to the crown bush stand I'm going to do like a skin and stuff so you can follow me if you want and we'll, I'll have a chat. Maybe you'll actually speak a bit nicer. We can reconvene on the yeah. crown brush stand. And you can come and really see how, how vivid that water is then as well. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> I think it's best you put it down so we know what it is. So, I'm going to take a tatty lash. If you don't have tatty lashes, why not? It's so, they're so good. They're my favourite lashes ever. Has anyone tried tatty lashes? No? Put it, yeah? Oh, I thought we had something in common. <laughs> So, does anyone ever struggle applying lashes, or are you all pros? I'll tell you anyway. But basically, when I apply lashes, I, I, I don't know why, but I, yeah, I just seem to get it on straight away. I don't, I don't faff with it. I find the more you faff with it, the, you are end up ruining your whole eyeshadow. So what I like to do is I'll just get her to keep her head up and look straight down towards her knees. I'm not getting her to close because that really, it's going to shrink your eyes, so you're going to have to cut more of your lash off. So when she looks straight down, it's almost stretching the skin so you can keep more of the actual hair with hairs on the lash. And I'm literally just going to take it right in the middle first, secure that on there, and then really start to push in the other side. And then really when I want to secure it onto the eye, I'll just get her to close and really just push it in. And this way you don't end up irritating the eyes then. Just because she's got her eyes really nice and closed for you. Straight ahead. 
And when you've done a really nice wing, these lashes just look really nice with it. This is a, these, these are a TL2, by the way. One of my fave styles. Oh, yes. So nice. A lash just brings the whole look together. It finishes it off. Right, guys, I'm so sorry, but we've got to love you and leave you. Yeah, we've got to go over the We've got to go and finish it off with the crown brush off. sand. <laughs> but that is all. But thank you for watching, everyone. Thanks so much. Um, and don't be afraid to come join us. Um, come get, say hi and whatever. But yeah, thanks again. Any questions, so brushes, tips, anything you need, pop over. February.